Welcome back to another week of Project Grown Up. This is a bi-weekly podcast about conquering the phenomenon known as adulthood through hard work, discussion, and most importantly, a lot of laughs. If you like the show, do us a favor and leave us a five-star review, like, and subscribe. I'm Alex here with my co-host, Danielle. Hey, hey. And Amy. Hey, girl. Hey. So this week we're talking about traveling and Danielle, I believe you just got back from a little trip yourself. Why don't you give us a little, a little scoop on what, what went down? So I went to Phoenix because my family lives there, my immediate family, and it was awesome. I miss the heat. <laughs> Starting yeah, to get how a little hot cool was it? in Buffalo. Yeah. 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 So I'm actually still adjusting to the three hour time difference, which doesn't say, seem like a lot, but man, it kicked my butt today. First day back to work and I'm tired. How, I'm very How hard. long were you there? Five days. Nice, nice. And it was hot there. How hot? 90s every day. And that's, and that's cool for them. They get in like 110, 120. Isn't that insane? Yeah, that's too hot. Down here in Florida, it's in the 90s. and <clears throat> no, I can't honestly, But it's true. It's like it wasn't humid. It was just hot. You know, like you get in the car and it's like, Mom, stop trying to worry about your seat and just put on the AC first. Oh, my gosh. And we're all yelling at her like, Mom! <laughs> the car yeah. start that you have yeah. in the winter, you like need that there to start the car to turn the AC on you know, before I've you get in. I if that works or not. Let us know, because I personally have never tried it, but I was like, technically it could work. You just, maybe not though, because you have to click the AC button. I'm not too sure, but it was awesome. I went hiking. We went to a lot of good dinners and lunches, et cetera. So highly recommend. So other than family, what inspires you to travel and how do you decide where to go? Well, the reason me and Dave went is because... I would I like to visit my family at least once a year and obviously I don't want to spend just two days there because I'd like to see them so I usually go see my family for a week once a year it's not the only time I see them because of course they come to Buffalo or wherever I am a couple times but to actually be there you know it's nice anyways um if I'm not doing that I feel like traveling is so important because one, I don't have any kids yet, so it's going to be the easiest. And Speaking of being cheap, um, Alex, I decide where to go based on how cheap it is because I don't have yeah. a lot of extra funds for traveling. Um, so I mostly just do local stuff. But once I start broadening out, one of my first things is going to be, you know, okay, where can I go that's super awesome, super beautiful, and I can see some sites and stuff and save my money for food. So I need a place where it's cheap to actually sleep. So budgeting is definitely going to be a, a key factor for me in deciding where to go. I like yeah, to well, say balling on a budget. Well, now you got to travel on a budget. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. At least you live in a good state where, you know, most people come for vacations. So, you know, Florida, we got the best beaches here in the U.S. Uh, at least they're voted. I mean, I'm not going to say West Coast doesn't have good beaches, but they are usually voted the top beaches. Before I, I think I've mentioned this before, but before I moved to Florida, the only traveling that I had done was to Florida. And now that I've moved to Florida, I've only traveled within Florida. So I have gone to St. Augustine and Sarasota, both really just wonderful. But I should probably broaden my horizons. Yeah, you could honestly do a road trip to Georgia or something. So for me, I love traveling. I would say I'm a travel addict. Yep. It, I'm a junkie for it. Emphasis uh, on the addict. Yeah. So the past uh, couple years have been uh, hard on me because I consider it my hobby or passion in life. And what inspires me to do it is just there's such a big world out there and everyone and every place is so different. And to be able to absorb and experience that and get lost in it is just you know, that's what I live for. Um, Where I decide to go, you know, where the wind blows me. So 
What's the biggest thing for you, Alex, when you're traveling? Are you in it for, I mean, like, if you can't say all of it, are you in it for the food, the new cuisine? Are you in it for, like, the new sites or the new culture, the people that you'll come in contact with? What really does it for you? What's that moment where every trip you have that moment where you're like, wow, this is this place? So I really like the culture, the people, the experience itself. I mean, the food's obviously a great aspect and, you know, relaxing if that's what you like to do on vacation but definitely interacting with the people in the culture um i did kind of want to tie that into my next topic is do you prefer leisure travel you know do you like to sit in a resort on the beach or are you busy sightseeing travel for me i'm definitely i like to see it all compared to just relax on the beach i like to interact with the people in the places I totally agree with that because as much as I like to relax, relaxing is for my days off. (laughs) Haven't you ever heard the saying, I need a vacation from my vacation? Like, if you're going to go explore and see the world, yeah, I know. That's how I felt at Disney. Like, it's a great time, but girl needs to sit down and drink some wine when she gets home because, man, that's exhausting. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) Anyways. Um, I would say that I, if I'm going to travel, I do want to do stuff, but I'm kind of a mixed bag because like, I really want to do stuff. That's the point of going. Cause I know I'm not going to be able to go again anytime soon. Um, but in order for me to actually go and be active and do stuff, I have to have a good travel buddy that does most of the planning, which is why it's really good to travel with Alex. Cause she's on top of those things. Um, but also The mixed bag part is sometimes I'm just super lazy. So we might be like, oh, we're going to go do this, this, and that today. And I'm like, actually, I'm thinking about a nap in the hotel, some drinks by the pool, and maybe to dinner. And that's okay. That's my other half of a perfect travel buddy is if I am not feeling like doing what was planned, it's okay. And they can go and do it by themselves, and they'll let me be. Everybody knows there's always that one person on a trip who just makes it not so... (laughs) leisurely yep that'd be me so maybe i'm a great travel buddy maybe i'm not no you are you're good i'll just leave you at the hotel i mean i'll go do everything if you want to chill but i gotta keep moving but i mean what else makes a good travel companion who have you traveled with that you really enjoy uh traveling with and why well i really do enjoy traveling with you but i just (laughs) haven't done that in such a long time that's my only example so don't use her (laughs) I got replaced with Dave, so. <laughs> That's not to say we can never go on a trip together. Um, but I, I don't know. I feel like I just, I need to do it with friends or family. And I feel like I always end up enjoying myself. As long as you well, don't, you- like I said, unless you have somebody who's constantly like, and doesn't let you breathe for a minute or who's just, I don't know. I've always had a good time. I'm not, I'm Would you ever to... travel alone? Or have you? Uh, I feel like I have multiple times. In a way. I mean, I moved twice. <laughs> so that kind of feels like I travel alone in a sense. But uh, no, to like actually go to a hotel and whatnot. Mm, I, I'm not sure I could do that because I feel like I want to go experience it with people. I understand why people travel alone. I mean, I'm sure there's very... There's something very thrilling about it. I went to go see a movie by myself one time and I was like, holy crap, I'm such an adult. Look at me. Wow. It's so thrilling. Going to the movie alone. It was actually very, um, not inspirational. Um, Like it made me feel proud. I don't know. Because like Um, I was comfortable being alone. So I was happy about it. I'm 100% there. No judgment, Danielle. For the record, um, I'm terrified of traveling alone. And I was going to say, before I could ever even consider doing that, A, I need to travel with people a couple more times first. And B, I need to go to the movies or something by myself. Um, when I, I took a week off work a couple weeks ago, and um, I was doing some physical healing and then also like some mental relaxation, like a, a staycation retreat, a little reset retreat, if you will per our one episode um and one of my tasks for myself was to go and watch a movie by myself but i lucked out and there was nothing good playing so i had a good excuse not to go so i still haven't done that yet but i could not travel alone brave that you can do that alex i like that about you yeah i was gonna say i've i've traveled alone um a few times i it's 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 fine but i definitely prefer having someone with me because it's just 
more exciting and you get to share that with someone else and new experiences. And it's just, it's fun to have a friend with you. Going alone is not that scary though. So if you're out there and you can't find someone to travel with you, just, you know, take the leap of faith and you'll be okay. You can do it. You can stay at a nice hotel. When you go out to eat, you don't have to sit at a table. So it's awkward. You can like eat at the bar, you know, so you don't feel all alone or embarrassed or whatever. You can talk to the bartender. Hey, you made a new friend. So you just got to figure out uh, how to make it work. You can also listen to our podcast here, Project Grown Up, and if you have your headphones in, it'll look like you're there on a mission. So, <laughs> good plug, Amy. Good plug. Got you. Well, you know, I'm assuming that most people don't travel because it's not the most financially responsible thing for them to do. However, like I said, I like to ball on a budget. So who doesn't like to travel on a budget? I'm sorry. I'm just never going to let that go. Anyways... How do you guys uh, find a good deal? I want to know your tips and tricks because this might help me in my own future traveling. I've actually been told recently um, by my acupuncturist, um, Travel Zoo is what she uses. Now, this is a huge tip right here. They have some incredible deals. It's a little secret, little known, but I've also heard um, a few other people who have used Travel Zoo and got incredible deals like around the world, like to Italy for 11 days, everything included for like crazy price. Like the, the flight alone would cost what the whole thing costs. So definitely check that out. Um, I think you have to like sign up for their emails or whatever, and that's how you get the notice. But definitely worth taking a look into. If you do like a little vacation with leisure and relaxing, um, I've gone through Apple Vacations. It's a, like kind of like a travel agency. Um, I used that for the Dominican Republic for a resort um, stay a few years ago. Everything was included, the flight, all the food, the resort for like five or six days, um, the alcohol, <laughs> the excursions, all that stuff. Again, really good price. And you don't have to worry about timing the flight with the hotel and like you just you just give them your money and they do it for you and they had good prices a few other tidbits you know because I'm always chatting it up with other people that like to travel um, to find flights uh, someone told me that I used to work with that I actually just talked to today that got back from Mexico City on Monday um, he suggested Hopper it's an app which helps you find like cheap flights for where you want to go or you can just kind of say, take me anywhere, and it will show you the best flights, the best time of the month to go, uh, the best days to go. Skyscanner is another website um, that I, another colleague I used to work with, she went out to like Southeast Asia for like three months. So she recommended Skyscanner. She was jumping around there from country to country. And then I've also heard of Scott's Cheap Flights, um, haven't done too much on that. Haven't looked into that too much, but definitely worth it if you're trying to ball on a budget or travel on a budget. There's my two cents. <laughs> okay, so I have a few tips and Alex, you kind of reminded me of them. The first one I'm going to start is with flights. So I actually have heard of two of those, but the one that I use the most is Skip Lagged and I don't book through them because it's always better to book through the actual airline or hotel, because if you ever want to cancel, you're probably not going to face as many fees as you would with a third party, such as like, um, you know, I don't really know who does Travelocity airline. Travelocity or something. Yeah, Travelocity yeah. or like, yeah, one of those ones, because uh, that does like flights and hotels, because I, having worked for a hotel before, um, it's kind of like doing a runaround with the third party and I've seen some people get really mad about it. So if you just book with the actual hotel or flight, it's going to, it might be a little bit more expensive. However, I have a way to get you out of that. And that is sign up for the reward program. Okay. Programs. Save lives. Okay. I just bought my sister an Apple watch just because I spend money already on American express and I had so many points that I was actually able to buy her an Apple Watch for only $75. Because I didn't want to use all my points. But you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like if you're going to spend the money anyway, why not try to get something back in the long run? So Absolutely. Me and, right. And me and Dave are trying to go to Hawaii. So we signed up, again, 
so you have to pay, you have to look at your actual wallet and say, okay, can I afford this? Like credit cards, most of them, you're going to have to pay a yearly fee. Okay. But I can afford 150 bucks a year to just go to American Express to be able to use the card. If you can't afford that, I totally understand. But there are some other ones um, like uh, Discover where you just get cash back. Yeah. Yeah. So the annual fee, if you can't afford that, I, I totally understand. However, the points really make a difference. I got a quick question. Do mm-hmm. they give you points on the yearly fees that you have to pay? So if it's yes. $150 yes. a year, do you yes. get 150 you do. points? <laughs> yes, you do. You do. And honestly, the point systems are great because, um, you know, you can get like free flights out of it. And whatnot. For example, Dave and I are trying to go to Hawaii in February and we're not going to have to pay a cent for the flights because Delta had a deal and I decided, okay, since I'm flying so much, I might as well just sign up for an airline credit card. And they had a promotion going on. Well, if you refer somebody, you get like this many points. And then it was also, we're going to give you 50,000 points or Mm -hmm. 60,000 points right away. If you can spend this much money in three months. So if you just put your rent on your credit card and then pay it off, boom. I did that for Delta too, and I also have a Southwest card. So I really, I, everything I pay for, I just use the credit card, pay the credit card off, get the points, and I pretty much always fly for free. Mm-hmm, exactly. And it's like, you know what? If you're going to spend the money, I'm going to say it again, why not reward yourself in the process? You're being a good adult, you're paying the bills. Oh, also, okay, that reminds me of my other tip, Amy, and it's my last one. So if you think it's too expensive to go somewhere, hotel hop. Because, for example, Miami is very expensive to go to and to stay at. So one trip, we stayed on North Beach, and it was way less money on a Friday and Saturday versus going to South Beach, where it's super popular, and it was going to cost us like 500 bucks a night. So we didn't Yo, do I'm that. I'm trying to stay on South Beach. I know. I know. South Beach is fun. Don't get me wrong, but it's not about the opportunity cost. I'm, we're we're talking about people who need to be on a budget, okay? So I'm trying to help. Yeah, them. And all on that budget. You can. I mean, I can't afford five hundred dollars a night though either. I don't know how anybody, how anybody can. I would say you can still ball on a budget, but you just have to. I mean, different people have different priorities of which portion of the traveling they spend the majority of their money on so while alex for alex it's more important to pay a little extra on room and board so she can be in south beach for you you'd rather save that money so that way maybe you guys could spend more on like experiences while you're in town or gourmet food or things like that so for me i don't mind staying a little bit further away if we have a car now if we don't have a car and we would have to uber around and stuff then in that case, I would rather pay more, stay in the fun city, and we're just going to have to eat bread and cheese um, the majority of the time. <laughs> no, it's true. You do have to do, like, kind of a cost analysis of, like, does it really make sense? Because, you know, I used to think, okay, so when I used to live in Fargo and my parents used to live in Chicago, that was 10 hours away. But if I was going to only be there for a quick weekend, it was like, why am I going to take two days of PTO just to travel when, and yeah, it'll be free, but to me, the time was more important. So I spent $300 on a flight that only was an hour. You have to look at what's more important to you, like Amy said. I have a question. <clears throat> this is in regards to traveling. Um, so in my mind, if I'm going to like plan a vacation or something, you know, like Danielle just said, oh, you might only have two days. I would try to look at like a holiday, like a, a long weekend or something. Like, oh, okay, we already have days off anyways. So then I just take two days off PTO and then my vacation is going to be five or six days instead of just like the three or four. Is that a good plan? Because I know isn't traveling like a lot more expensive and chaotic during holiday weekends or is it going to be cheap still if you plan it in advance? So it's still going to be expensive because that's when, you know, there's a surge and that's, you know, when hotels and everything make more money flights um but again it depends like if you don't have a lot of pto then you got to work with what you got so either you're going to have to take more pto um for like 
say you take a week off and you can go maybe one place, or if you're able to split it up and use some of those holidays, then you can go to more places, but it might be a little more expensive. So it just depends how you like to spend your time and your money. For me, I would split it up and do shorter trips with the holiday vacation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's what I would like too. You know what? Uh, weekend long weekend trips, like leave on a Friday, co come back on a Monday, are really great too. Like take the first flight out on a Friday, leave like the last flight out on a Monday, are really great because you really get to like maximize your time. And if you're not going to like, you know, somewhere that's six hours away, if you're only doing like an hour or two hour flight, like it only takes an hour to get to Boston from here, and apparently they're only like seventy bucks for a round trip. It's like Take advantage of that, too, because I do like traveling, but I know, you know, sometimes you spend so much time in a place and then you're like, OK, I'm ready to go back home. So it kind of forces you to pick what you want to do and then mm -hmm. go home. So is that kind of what you would do then? So say if we're forced in just a weekend, how do you pack everything into the weekend? How do you prioritize that? And how do you like do you guys actually write it down what you're going to do? How do you make your travel plan or whatever you call it? So so for me, because I'm a bit psycho about all this, I definitely, <laughs> oh, yeah. She's so I've, got, honest. I've got, I've got a method down. So I do my research, I put it in Google docs where I want to go. And then what I do on Google maps is you can drop pins on the locations you want to go. And then what I'll do to maximize my time from there, um, I'll zoom in on the city with the pins and then I will see how long uh like distance wise in between the pins are so is it going to take like 20 minute drive is it going to take 30 minute drive or transportation and then i'll plan from there to hit up all the points that are closest together so i'm not wasting time going back and forth between points across the city or the country so that's how i use the best of my time try to pick the top um, things you want to see or do and then put it all on a map to see where where it lies She's not kidding. She really does this. It's I do, actually great, I do. though, because I don't have to do much other than be like, oh, I want to absolutely go do this. But that's kind of what I do is I just say, like, you know, I'll look at Alex or whoever I'm traveling with and be like, what is the number one thing you absolutely want to do when we're there? Because, you, you know, just so you don't have any regrets when you leave. Like, if I go to Hawaii, I want to go see Pearl Harbor. Like, I definitely want to do that. And I definitely want to go to a luau. So, you know, you kind of make a mental list sometimes if you're not like Alex and make the physical list. But I did used to make the physical list a lot more. I just kind of forgot about it lately. I think, though, when you're traveling, you know, stuff can happen. Delays, you can lose your luggage, all sorts of stuff. So obviously, if you can be better prepared ahead of time, if you make your list and know where you want to go, how much time you have for each place, you know, make sure you're packed well, you have your outfits all planned out, you have everything you need packed in your carry-on in case your luggage gets lost, you have extra photocopies of important documents like passports. But in the end, you just have to remember that like you're traveling mostly for fun and you just have to be flexible when plans might change and just go along with it. Yeah, I think the number one thing I've seen happen at the airport, thankfully never to me because I've never been on a cruise, is people will be going to like Florida, say, for example, to hop on another or to get on a cruise. And we're somewhere like Philly where the connecting flight got delayed eight hours. <laughs> and then they're like, uh, what am I going to do? And it's like, well, the soonest flight is the one that's happening in eight hours. So sit back, relax and suck it up. And like that's your cruise. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. That's what. Well, that's why. Somebody in the other room, Dave, would be like, oh, that's why you should book your flight for the day before you're going to get on the cruise to make sure you get there in plenty of time. Wow, and that's responsible. I know, yeah, right? I was like, a good oh, point. yeah. Yeah. He's, that's really he's smart. Very, Take that down. He's a very, yeah, he's a very smart man. So definitely allow extra time for traveling. If you're going international, go those extra hours early to the airport, book the flight ahead of time, you know, before the cruise, not the same day as the cruise, just in case something goes wrong. Um, I would just say, you know, I, I don't have a lot of travel tips, but just a person tip. Um, if you're traveling with people, keep your negativity to yourself. 
if someone like is annoying you on the plane or you're too hot or the bugs are getting you or the room's not as big as you thought it was going to be or whatever, you know, it's fine. Complain one time, let it out and then get over it because you don't want to ruin the trip for everybody. That will like it really can ruin everybody's experience because for the rest of their lives, when they think back on that lovely trip they had to Hawaii, all they're going to think about is Karen in the back seat complaining about the bug spray smell. Yes. Remember, you're traveling for fun, for the enjoyment, for the experience, to get lost, to do new things. Sometimes things can pop up that are frustrating, but in the end, just remind yourself to be grateful for the experience and the time you have. Oh, okay, before we wrap up, we're going to do a quick travel slay that Q&A. So I want to start off, what's the one drink you always get during a flight, pre-pandemic, before they only offered three options? Water. (laughs) Water? (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't usually pick a drink on the flight. It's either water or a Coke, but I really have to be like in the mood for a Coke. Um, I do get a Coke. I also get water. And then I also get a margarita. And I love it on the plane. Well, I don't think they do it anymore. But they used to have like those decently sized bottles of Patron. Um, So you would get it and you'd have enough for two margs. It was a great time. I have to ask, how much was a margarita on a flight? Oh, it was probably like 14 to $18. Oh. <laughs> and, oh but you got two. Get chiseled. Eh. All right. I, I like ginger ale. I don't know how that became a... Wow. A flight drink, but uh, yep, got to hit me up with that. All right. Do you consider yourself a traveler or a tourist? Um, I'm definitely a tourist because, and I'm the person too, that's like, you can tell I'm a tourist and people are like, stop looking like such a tourist before we get robbed. So that's me. Mm, I think I'm a traveler. Alex has taught me well. <laughs> yeah, I'd go with I'm a traveler. Sometimes you got to be a tourist though. Oh Just yeah. Don't be a snobby Annoying drunk tourists. No one likes those ever. <laughs> okay. And the last one. Today, I'd rather be in blank. For me, it's Hawaii. What about you guys? I don't know what the name of the place is, but I want to go to that place where the Kardashians went, where Kim lost her earring. I think that was in the Caribbean. Probably. I want to go somewhere there. Some beautiful islands. Oh, I can. The name is so complicated, but I know what you're talking about. Today, I'd rather be in, mm, I'm feeling Morocco. Ooh, that sounds fun. Someone I follow on Instagram is there, and I'm just, like, living vicariously through her. (laughs) One of my friends is in, what is it, Alex? Menorca? 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 Some sort of island off of Spain. Mallorca? She was in, Kim K was in Bora Bora. (laughs) Was she really? Yeah, it was Bora Bora. Daniel, like, it was really hard to pronounce. (laughs) No, I thought she was in, uh, oh gosh, what's the name of it? Antigua. Bora Bora. I thought it was in Antigua. Well, not according to Google. As always, you know, we want to leave you with some words to live by. Today, I'm quoting Pico Iyer. We travel initially to lose ourselves, and we travel next to find ourselves. Join us for new episodes every other week. They will drop Monday, so you can start the week off right as we unravel another chapter of Project Grown Up. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast, and you better leave us a five-star review or we're going to be that bad traveler. If you or anyone you know would be great for RPG-inspiring stories, send us an email at projgrownup at gmail.com. Hopefully you found some keys to success in this episode. Cheers to another week of trying to be a grown-up. Cheers, ladies. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.